been more polarizing than I thought. Have you read this? Yeah, and I don't, and I don't understand why. I, I think. I think it's because of the expectation of being Boba Fett and you expect this character that you don't necessarily get. You're getting a different Boba Fett. You're not getting the same Boba Fett of old. My impression was that some of it was because the Mandalorian series premiere had Baby Yoda in it and there was no equivalent of that. But it's not the right show for that. Yeah, it's, it's a different show. He's a crime boss. He's trying to take over someone else's uh, territory. But this is not the same Boba Fett that was swallowed by that Sarlacc and came out of it. They're two different ones. Yeah. You know, so that's sort of what I want to... When we do talk about Boba Fett, I want to sort of get into some of the things that I felt that they were portraying with this show and where it's leading towards. And, and I, to me, I think it was excellently executed. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I was fine, but we we may wind up seeing episode two and being like, yeah, they really should have put one and two out because that would have made the people who are underwhelmed feel better about what they were. Yeah, doing. yeah. And welcome back, everybody. Happy New Year to everyone out there. Um, I'm your host Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. And uh, we got a lot to discuss, but we're gonna sort of be doing a couple of shows so that we can get everything that we need to discuss out because there's a lot of important topics that we want to get through. But we want to sort of talk about in this episode some of the years, 2022, uh, most anticipated films that we're looking forward to. And they're not all superhero films. Let's get that out the way. There are other things that we're interested in as well, right, Brian? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think it'll be another crowded calendar we still have a lot of delayed releases that are coming this year in addition to the regularly scheduled releases. So a heavy count. Yeah. But before we get into that list, I got to talk about this because it bothered me when I heard it. I listen to John Campion. I listen to him every day because I like his show. I respect what he does. Uh, he's unapologetically him. And he doesn't, I don't believe ever mean to offend he just says what he feels and uh it is what it is but um i follow him i listen to him every day and i watch his shows where he sort of break down his breaks down his uh setup and how he does things because he does a lot for one guy i think he's got a lot more help now to further progress his show but he says something today you know and again i don't often agree with john camp he sometimes he says some stuff that just doesn't make sense to me and today he says, he asked a question, what movie or what movie upcoming has the ability to get up to a billion? Who's going to be number 50? Because right now we have a 49 movie club that's made it to a billion dollars. Who's going to be number 50? And he said that the Batman, he doesn't believe will make it. He doesn't think it'll get up to a billion dollars. <throat> He says there could be a lot of confusion because of the all the Batman talk that we've gotten lately with Michael Keaton and Ben Affleck and people are going to associate um, the Batman because of his poor item with, with Batman versus Superman. Granted, Batman versus Superman, Superman was horrible for many. And it still made a lot of money. Had it been great, we would have seen a billion dollar movie. People are not going to mistake the Batman that's coming out in on March 4th with Robert Pattinson and think, oh, that's the Twilight guy. They're going to remember, or they're going to know Robert Pattinson to be the guy that was in, um, what's that movie with Chris Nolan? Tenet. Tenet. And other things that he's done. The guy has a reputation of being a great actor so, thus far. And... This movie is not going to have the baggage that Suicide Squad did. Meaning, it wasn't a Suicide Squad that came out that everybody, not everybody, that most people didn't like. Or we, it wasn't critically acclaimed. It wasn't, didn't do well and when people reviewed it, yet it made $700 million or over $700 million. And you can't confuse it with the Suicide Squad that came out in 2021, which everybody seemed to have loved and made hardly any money. 
let's just say it didn't do well. This movie has the same, or, or very close to it, hype as No Way Home. We've been waiting for this movie for over a year now, huh, Brian? Yes, correct. So you're going to say that this movie is not going to make a billion dollars. He doesn't think that this movie is going to make a billion dollars. That is crazy. Brian, I asked you, do you think this movie is going to be a, a, a billion dollar movie? And you practically scoffed at me. Is John Campy out of his mind? Yeah, I mean, so I think I, I think let's let's break down how you could how he could be right and then yes. why we think he's wrong. So yes. the most obvious reason, the most obvious way he could be right is the reviews are bad, right? If the reviews are comparable to Batman versus Superman, comparable to Justice League, and everything we've been teased in this otherwise brilliant promotional campaign, which that will have something to do with that. Yes. If that's all for show. And this movie is a mess, and all of the all of the production rumor issues that turn out to be true, and yeah, then it will not make. It will be like Batman versus Superman. You'll get that yeah. big opening weekend. So that one did 166 million opening weekend, 800 you know box office total. Yeah. But it just crazy. It came out. Everyone saw it and was like. What? This isn't that great. I'm not having that great a time. And and, and yeah. the word of mouth was bad, and it tanked in the, in the su subsequent weekend. Yeah. So that's how this could fall short. But as you said, you know, you have a you have a bad you have a pretty badly reviewed, not or at least polarizing to not well liked BBS still made $800 million. Man, imagine if it was liked. And, you know, Batman still has this halo effect. You know, Man of Steel was a better reviewed movie. I know John Campion loves that movie. Oh, yeah. I like it. Not as much as he does. I like it more than you do. Yeah. But I just illustrate that. So Man of Steel, a better reviewed movie, a much better reviewed movie than BBS did about $650 million of gold. Mm -hmm. So just putting the bat symbol on the poster was basically worth $200 million to a worse move. I mean, that's like a really simplistic way to think about Batman's cultural impact. Of course. Now, I also don't think Batman is nearly as bad a shape in the minds of people as it was coming off of Batman and Rob. The movie, the Batman movie that had to deal with the baggage was Batman Begins. That was the movie where people were like, the last time we saw Batman, it was Clooney and nipples and crazy <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger. Like, and they had to undo all of that. All that yes. At a time when comic book movies were not widely accepted as blockbuster film serious yeah. film right? that's that's when x2 was like the gold standard of everything this industry had ever made you know blade one was still only like six years early yeah so that movie did about 400 million in 2004 dollars there was also was no fantastic. international box there was also yeah. no international box office back then yeah that yeah. would blow up in the next five years yeah so i'm just saying People want to say, and by the way, the other reason the, the baggage of Batman is not what people think it is, is that Affleck's portrayal generally is viewed as okay to pretty good. Yes. It, you, you can argue the Snyderverse as a whole, but he was generally regarded as one of the better elements of the stories. And I also think, don't underestimate this, I think the Zack Snyder's Justice League helps the cause that was an improved movie over the original justice league and it's the last thing people saw mm -hmm. that had a live action batman on screen so my point is people are going to come into this ready for a new take on solo batman and this film has promoted itself perfectly 
even people, I listen to podcasts about films all the time. Even people who are not the biggest fans of the genre are hyped for this movie because of the trailer, because of the Nirvana cover, because of the mood, the tone, the cast. Like this movie is drawing in a non-comic book audience at least to check it out, which means if it's good, those people are going to deliver word of mouth beyond people like us who are always going to want to see stuff like this. So I think if reviews are 80% or better on Rotten Tomatoes, I think this cast has a pretty good, I don't know what you want to call it, like awareness score because you got some hot younger actors, right? Pattinson, Kravitz, they play really well with the younger crowd. You got some, you know, Oscar guys, you know, obviously you've got like Jeffrey a Jeffrey Gordon. Right, Jeffrey Wright, he's like playing, playing Commissioner Gordon, like Andy Serkis, who should have his own Oscar category. Colin, Colin Farrell. Farrell doing something we've never seen Colin Farrell do before. Like, this has that reach. The only audience I don't see this movie really accessing is like younger kids. I think this is pretty darn dark to where like there'll be some parents that are like, I'd rather see this on demand. I'd rather wait. I'm not sure I want to take my kid to see something this intense. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. other than that, man, like that, as we saw with like Joker, that's not going to prevent a billion dollars if this is good. So like, I think, I think for me, this is like, I'm looking for a, you know, 1.2 something that's like in the 400 to 500 million domestic, maybe even a little better and then international is a bit better than that. And that kind of gets you, you know, Dark Knight Rises was one, one. You know, we got a glo bigger global box office now. Like, I think this will be at least at that level if the reviews justify okay. the quality of the motion. If the reviews are great, we see a 1.5. We see that's 1. what you're 5. saying. I think you're high, I, but that's I, what you're saying. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing 1.5. I think you're saying 1.5. You just don't want to go that far out. Uh, there. No, I just, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just point, like, I'm pointing out also like you know, No Way Home is going to get there. Yeah. And No Way Home has been an event and a half. Yes. And No Way Home has no audience hangups. Everybody can go see that movie. And so, yeah. oh, the other thing I point out is the calendar has cleared out for Batman with, with Doc Strange moving off. You know, but nobody's really challenging that March area, right? So they kind of have like a lead in where there's nothing else big playing in front of them. Yeah. And they kind of have like at least a month plus where nobody's challenging. So if this is good, you're going to have a whole month of March where Batman is dominating weekend box office. Yeah. That's the other thing you need to get to a billion dollars. Yeah. And of course, obviously, the, the, the elephant in the room that we haven't spoken about, if those conditions are still, if, if they have gotten worse and people aren't able to get to the movie theaters, that's another one that can hinder the the prospects of a billion dollars but you know i'm hoping that by that time we're at a better place and people are just that much excited to see the batman as they were for the spider-man and we're going to get a, a tremendous showing it will i mean we'll sort of get some indicators once we start purchasing tickets and seeing what's available and things of that nature we'll get a sort of get a feel for that when that time arrives but John Campy, I think you know this is going to reach a billion dollars. You just said it so you can get a rise out of people. <laughs> That's what I think. That's what I think. But yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think. Will Batman? Will the Batman reach a billion dollars? <clears throat> now, for 2022, Brian, you stated it's still a jam-packed year. A lot of things are coming out. Some of them are coming out in the movie theater. Some of them on streaming platforms. But I have a list of movies that I have um, that I, you know, have on my most anticipated list. And um, you want to you want to start or you want me to start from 10 to and give you my whole list. And I have an honorable mention. I have honorable mentions as well. Why don't we start at number 10? Um, I would be shocked if we don't have the same number one. Um, so. <laughs> Shocked. Yeah. I would be like, what, yeah. pod, what part of the multiverse am I in if we don't have the same number one? So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. but yeah, let's start at number 10. Or actually, start with your honorable mentions. Actually, that's probably what we're talking Okay, about. I have one. Okay. Um, and when I heard this casting and who was directing, I said, I got to see this movie when it comes out. And that's The Gray Man um, with uh, uh, Chris Evans and uh, what's the guy's name? Brian Gosling. 
Yeah, Ryan Gosling, directed by the Russos. I want to see anything the Russos direct. They do. They it's usually a hell of a time when they direct. So, um, and and directing those two in this film, I don't know. I forgot what the premise, but the premise seemed interesting, and I'm looking forward to seeing that one when it comes out on Netflix. Yep. Um, and when this was announced, this was huge at the time. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that movie. Uh, and it's crazy that they didn't make my top 10, but um, it's certainly w- worth mentioning. Yeah, I, I, think that's a, I think that's a great call. Also in my honorable mentions as well. We, I think part of the problem for some of these is like we haven't, we, all we have is concept. We haven't seen any footage. We don't have a sense of tone, but you know, it's an espionage thriller. It's effectively one spy, super spy chasing another. So it's kind of like, you know, part born, but then part sort of Mission Impossible. And obviously, yeah. like you said, Rus- Russo's in action now are synonymous. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's also a high, that's also a very highbrow cast. I mean, like Ryan Gosling doesn't really step into that kind of movie that often. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Blade Runner is probably a notable exception. Maybe, uh, what was the other one? Drive. Um, yes. Drive so, was dope. Yeah. So, like, it's pretty rare when he kind of gets, gets his hands dirty with action. And obviously, Chris Evans, I think, has, has shown he's a pretty, pretty versatile actor, too. So, yeah, I think that's, that's a great call. I think it would probably, it might actually be in my top 10 if we had a trailer, but we don't really have any. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm with you. Honorable mention as well. So is that your only honorable mention? Yeah, that was my only one. All right. So I'll throw a couple that like, these would be even like, I just want to point out to the point of jam pack. These are movies that I consider that didn't even make honorable mentions. I just want to bring up because I think they'll be decent size movies in terms of pop mm-hmm. up. Mm-hmm. But Jurassic World Dominion, I'm not that excited, but I guarantee it's going to make a lot of money. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lightyear, speaking of Chris Evans, the Buzz Lightyear Pixar movie that, like, is based on the actual Buzz Lightyear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The this, is that. That, that, this is a character that hasn't, this is a character has never died since, since his inception. Correct. So people so, like, are definitely looking forward to seeing this movie. Yeah, I'm not, but, like, it, it's going to do great. Um, By the way, Uncharted did not make my honorable mentions a top 10, but uh, <laughs> okay. Sony's going to definitely try hard. And that's yeah. a famous video game. So Mark Wahlberg. Why don't, let's do this. For movies that come out in the theaters, let's say whether or not, because I'm pretty sure there are some here that perhaps may be able to reach a billion dollars. Okay. Jurassic World definitely can. Okay. Uncharted, no chance. Lightyear, I don't think so. Um, it'll be, it'll be, it'll it'll be it's highly good. A billion dollars. No, it's not. okay. When and when is that coming out? Someone, I think. Okay. Uh, also, not making the honorable mentions for me. Morbius now delayed. To me, I'm just yeah. Like, it didn't make it. it, didn't make it. I, just, I looked at it. and I'm like, <laughs> nah, it's not in that class. So I that's not even. That's like it. below my honorable mention. Yeah. The honorable mentions I had. So I had Gray Man on there. Um, I am an unapologetic fan of Michael Bay, so Ambulance is also an honorable mention for me. That looks Jake interesting. Hall. That looks and interesting. Michael Bay is usually pretty good when he's not doing the uber big movie. Like if you look at like original Bad Boys, Thirteen Hours, like when he tones it down, he's actually a pretty interesting director, and that actually looks like a pretty interesting movie. So I have that in my honorable mention. The North Man, directed by Robert Eggers with Alexander, that looks crazy it's like a viking revenge story okay. the trailer just came out recommend you check it out it's pretty wild. okay <laughs> okay and then you know the the two the two i struggle with the most and they're both in in, in our genre i kept super pets in the honorable mention category even though i think it's going to be one of the biggest movies of the year it obviously would make my kids top 10 probably yeah, top yeah, yeah. three um, but for me, first, I did this as a me personally list. It's mm-hmm. not quite there, but I, I am intrigued. Um, Do you think it makes then, a billion? I don't know if this will come as a surprise to you, but Aquaman 2 didn't make my top 10. <laughs> it's not even, uh, again, when I was making this list, it. <laughs> I didn't even think about it. But do you think uh, Super Press is going to make a billion? I think it's got a chance. I think. I think it's I think it's a layup for like, we talked about like 750, 800. I think that's a layup. I think it's yeah. like, if it gets if it gets the reviews and it gets going, like I think that's the perfect time for that movie. Like, and some other movies around it aren't quite as good as people are thinking. I think you can make a run at that. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I think it's in play. Um, we do not think Aquaman two is going to make a billion dollars. I think we're in that camp that this is going to actually step down. Yes, um, priors. 
there's obviously no way to measure gray man for global box. And then, and, you know, and Jason, even if ambulance and Northman are great, they won't, they're not designed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, so. and if, a, if Aquaman 2 doesn't make a billion dollars, what's the, the rumor that Jason Momoa was going to sue Amber Heard? <laughs> That's going to be very interesting. And that I hope it doesn't Aqu- make a billion dollars Aquaman so I can see 3. that happen. <laughs> that would be Aquaman 3 right there. <laughs> so my number 10, and this may be come, come as a surprise, but I feel like it's just been so long, but you can't always, you can't count him out. And that's um, Avatar 2. I, I have Avatar 2 much higher than that. Go ahead, speak on it though. Okay. Well, I mean, again, Avatar 2, you know, when it first came out, everybody was going crazy over it. And then it's been what? When, when, when did I come out? It will be 13 years. 13 uh, years. And, and and usually when you wait so long to follow up on a movie, but James Cameron hasn't proven, he's proven that you can wait a while and, and put something out again, AKA Terminator 2, and, and it'd be successful. Um, so... Is I'm looking forward to seeing because he's a type of dude that he has a vision and he doesn't stop until that vision is realized, and the technology may not be available for it to 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 to, to um, show people what it's supposed to be, and he waits and he does research and development. He that dude is is a machine, and so Avatar Two is something I'm looking forward to, but it's it, it's not on my most highly anticipated. Um, in terms of spot on the on the list, so that's why it's my number ten. Wow. Okay. I'll 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 I'll, I'll ride for it later in the list, but um, uh, I have it higher than that in the top ten. Okay. My number ten is Black Adam. So I have Black Adam. Okay. At 10. Uh, I have it higher than yours. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> so <clears throat> the case the case four in my mind is really two pieces is as much as we have had our fun kind of, you know, criticizing the rock or asking questions about him, you do still have to pay attention when the rock decides to actually be a superhero. So there is a part of me that says, I don't think this can be off the list because it is a genre he really hasn't tried before. And as I've always said in his defense, he, he almost never gives you an outright bad time at the theater. So I want to see what he can do. I don't think the promotion of this movie has done it any favors. I do not think it will get to a billion dollars, and I stand by that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think The Rock as a anti-hero superhero makes sense. And in the back of my head, the other thing I kind of applied a little bit to this list was, even though we haven't seen it, they've teased this sort of new camera work effect for superheroes and I just want to know what that looks like on screen. Yeah, and so yeah. I the applaud the reaction. It's definitely different. There. And so that, from an anticipation perspective, I'm like, if I'm going to see something visually I've never seen before in this genre, those two things have me interested. What keeps it lower in my mind is just, like I said, everything public we've gotten about this film, about its promotion, about its description, is just making me scared that this is really nothing more than the same vehicle for the rock we've been seeing for the past 10, 15 years, just with him wearing a cape and having yeah. that's my biggest fear. And if it's that, then it's just really gonna be another rampage and another skyscraper and another San Andreas just in the comic book genre. And that would feel really tragic uh, because this character definitely can be force in the universe. So that was my push pull, and that's why I landed at 10. Yeah, uh, let me ask you this. Do you think the Black Adam, if it does great reviews, do you think it still has a chance of a billion dollars? If it's yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I, I think like everything we everything we say and why I don't think it will get there is just based on the rock track record. And you know, the director he's using is a director who kind of fits right in the mold of what he's done before. Yeah. And so I just that's where I'm sort of expecting this to have a you know, Rotten Tomatoes score and like 65, you know, which is yeah. fine, but not going to make the casual person necessarily get up and go see it. And so then you walk out of there and you're like, all right, production budget, I don't know what it was, 150, 200. Movie makes 650. Studio's happy. They made money. But like, we're sitting there being like, this is not a great, F. this is a B to B plus superhero film. 
And that's, I don't know, my expectation. And if I felt different, I would obviously have it much higher than today. Yeah. Oh, my number nine is Mission Impossible. Mission, Mission Impossible number six, man, I enjoyed watching that movie. It was, to me, one of the, perhaps one of the greatest action films I've seen in quite a while. And, uh, and, and, and I enjoyed it tremendously. And um, I think uh, a lot of people are looking forward to seeing what's next in that, in that movie for him in terms of stunts and, 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 and spectacle that we're used to seeing from Mission Impossible. And, and this could, if it's good, I say it'll make a lot of money. I don't know if it'll make a billion, though. I also have this considerably higher on my list, uh, but I agree okay. with everything you just said. I think this is the rare series that is aging like a <clears throat> fine wine. It just gets better. That, if, right? It, what the, I want to talk more about, because they've cracked the code, and I actually think there's some things in this movie that I wish the superhero genre would embrace. Mm -hmm. It is not a superhero movie, but it has a number of elements that I think would be really suitable Mm -hmm. to certain types of superhero movies, especially ones where there are team ups, uh, because this movie has really cracked the code on how to do that. But yes, I agree. I think this one, uh, the box office for these films has been trending up, but generally has been around the $700 million global yeah. range. And I think that's, you know, you're probably expecting that uh, this go around. But I actually have it much higher just because uh, I, uh, I think Rogue Nation is actually my personal most rewatchable favorite in the series, but I think Fallout is a better movie. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and those two together are as good a pair of modern action movies as we've had. So I have it higher, but I agree that it should be in the top 10. Yeah. My number nine, staying in the DC universe, is Flashpoint. So I didn't expect you to have this one on the list, but here's what I couldn't get away from. So, and we share all the same concerns about Ezra Miller. We're not really believers in him as the Flash. But the thing I, we talk about anticipation, the thing I couldn't get out of my head was that this is the movie that is supposed to reset, rechart, and send us into the DC multiverse. Yes. And they put it in the hands of a pretty interesting director, and Andy Muschietti, who did mm -hmm. some really good work on it. And they got Michael Keaton to come back as Batman. And like for me, I, I couldn't get it out of my head. I was like, I don't really want to have this movie super duper high. But I kind of feel like from an anticipation perspective, everything we're going to get from the DC universe that is not the Batman, because we know that's not part of this universe, hinges on this film. Mm -hmm. So if you're at all, I feel like a fan of the DC product, I kind of feel like you have to at least be curious as to what this movie is going to show you. So again, I don't think the track record of the DC universe warrants this being like two or three. And we certainly, you know, the teaser we got at Fandom wasn't anywhere like the Batman's teaser at the prior Fandom to make you feel ultra excited about it. But I couldn't leave it off the list. Because like I said, it's just, it's the fulcrum of the future of DC. And yeah. it, there's just a part of me that just like has to know what that looks like. Yeah. So I'll be there opening night for it. Okay. Yeah, I I, I I agree that it's 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 uh, <clears throat> an anticipated movie because of all the elements that you just described, and um, people are going to be looking forward to seeing what this is going to look like. So yes, I can see I can see why Flashpoint would be an anticip uh, on a most anticipated film list because it has a lot that we're looking to see what's going to happen in the film and what, what's going to be the next, uh, I guess, uh, route that this DC universe goes, right, after this film. And again, it's not like we've, we haven't spoken about the Flashpoint being the reset that everybody was looking for. We said this, is, will, this, will, this movie is going to be the reset. We've been talking about this for over a year probably. So it, there's no surprise when there, it was no surprise on my on my part when I when I read that, you know, um, and it, it certainly made a lot of news and a lot of headlines. People were talking about it, but I, I we knew that this was going to happen. Also, uh, don't see a billion dollars for this either. 
yeah. no chance. I would be shocked. Even 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 with a good review, shocked. I'd be shocked. You still be shocked. I just don't think that. I don't think the cachet of the character is that big. Um, you know, yes. it'd be like if Michael Keaton's Batman was the star of the movie. Okay, maybe that's a different conversation. But obviously, there would be a Batman movie, not a Flash movie. I just don't yeah. think the Flash carries that heft to get you yeah. that. Hot. And the actor playing the Flash is not like Joaquin Phoenix playing the Joker, right? In terms of like they're big enough to carry the box office. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I think if this thing cracks six hundred, it's a it's a big win for for Warner Brothers. That's my yeah. thing. Uh, my number eight is Creed three. Okay, a couple of reasons why is because I'm hoping. To see what's, I want to see what Jonathan Major uh, does with this role, and I'm hoping he's Clubber you're Lang's assuming son. That, yeah, I was gonna say you're <laughs> assuming that, that you know nothing about this movie. You're just assuming it's a Clubber Lang. Uh, yeah, I, it has movie. to be. It just has to be, Brian. It has to be. It has to be. It, it, it wouldn't make sense if it wasn't. You know, you gotta bring Lang back. You gotta give Mr. C some paper, man, because he has <laughs> he's doing commercials and stuff like that. It's like, come on, man. He did too, too much for me, in my opinion, for the Rocky franchise for you to not get this do some a uh, little bit of that back. So I'm hoping to see a great performance from Zion the Majors. I'm hoping to see, you know, uh hopefully uh, Mr. T in this film and and and, and see a resurgence of that lang, the Lang clan. I couldn't put it on the list for a couple of reasons. Um, was so number did you one. Think about it. Did you think about it? I did. I did. Okay. I did think about it. Again, I do think this is one that suffers from like we haven't seen. You know, like when you got the teaser for Creed Two, where you saw the Drago, you know, yeah. you know kind of warm ups, and you're like, oh, okay, this is pretty. At least gets you sort of nostalgic and excited. So the three things that ha I just I'm curious, but I don't. I don't know like if I'm quite there on it yet. One is like you said, we don't know the storyline. We assume it's rock, it's a Rocky Three parallel, but we don't know that. Number two is I think I'm gonna miss Sly. I think his version of the older mentor Balboa in this series really added a lot. Yeah. Um, and I loved his work with Michael B. Jordan. And so I think I'm really gonna miss that. Like the fact that he's not in this movie, I think actually to me was like, it feels like a real boy. And I, I'm not sure how this movie is going to fill that. Yeah, that's... So that's my second concern. And the third is, you know, it's not that, like a concern. It's just sort of a question mark. It's just Michael B behind the camera. It's his directorial debut, yeah. you know? And that's the other thing. It's like, it could be great. Like he's a, he's an excellent actor. And like, maybe he has a great eye, but not every great actor is a great filmmaker. George Clooney is a pretty awful director for someone mm -hmm. who's a pretty accomplished, you know, that's being an actor. So that's the other reason I was just like, I think my anticipation stays low until I kind of see some footage, have a better sense and like get that visual sense of like, does Michael B. Jordan have the DNA of like what Ryan Coogler brought to this franchise where like you watch some of those boxing scenes, you're like, oh, what is this? This is revolutionary to sports oh, on yeah. film. So that's why for me, like it's, it's I definitely want to see it. I definitely will see it. I've enjoyed the series. Um, but for me, I'm like sort of TBD on it. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you see Without Remorse? Yeah, didn't love it. I was disappointed. Yeah, me, yeah, me too. Me too. Disappointed. Yeah, it was just, I don't know. I don't think that's a franchise starter. He might want it yeah. to be, but I don't think it was. Yeah. All right, so that was your your number eight. Number eight. All right, so <clears throat> my, my number eight is the lone animated entry on this list, and it's across the spider verse. Okay. It, it, wow, it didn't even make my list either. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, the first one, the first one is great. I mean, I think it's like one of those things where if you're a fan of Spider-Man, this was a really interesting take. I like the animation; it's different. Um, the trailer is pretty fun if you've seen it, um, and I'm pretty excited. So, like, this is what this is a story that I, I I didn't see it in the theater. Actually, I watched it after the fact, mm -hmm. and uh, I felt bad that I hadn't gone to see it in the theater. And so I'm pretty excited to see the continuity of the story. Obviously, we don't have a live action Miles Morales. So this is what we have right now. Yeah. Um, and so I guess I feel like I'm in pretty good hands with uh, Lord and Miller on this and pretty excited to see where this story can go. Uh, I think for a lot of people, this actually has become, interesting enough, the defining interpretation of Spider-Man. You see a lot of people who think this is actually the best Spider-Man film of any kind that's been put yeah. out there. 
Um, so, you know, and I'm just sort of, like I said, it's, it's like, how much do I anticipate? How much do I like want to be there day one? Like this is a movie that's actually very high on the list just because of how well made it was and how original it was. So yeah, that's my number eight, Cross the Spider-Verse. And I don't think it has a shot at a billion. I mean, I think the first one was around, again, at least successful, but with around like $400 million, this one feels you can kind of one up that maybe you get to 500, 600, but I don't, I don't yeah. think it's a billion. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Spider Man into the across the Spider Verse um, is certainly something I, you know I want to see. I really enjoyed the first one, um, but for me, it's like, how can they top? I mean, they have to do. I think they have to go to great lengths to top this. You're right. That's fair. Um, and if it's more the same, I'm gonna feel like, you know, like how can you top all the emotions and all the stuff that you did in that movie? How are you gonna top that? That's that's hard. And if they're able to, fantastic, and you'll get another great movie. Certainly, I don't think it's going to reach a billion dollars. Although, you know, who knows? Um, Spider fans may come out uh, once or twice to go see this film. But um, yeah, 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 yeah. I, it, and unfortunately, they didn't make my list, but uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Um, my number seven, Black Panther. Also my um, number seven. Ding, ding, ding. Okay, great. So we can have a little discussion about it. Yeah. Um, I was watching John Campy and he's and he and, and he mentioned a couple of things that I agreed with him. What, one was that you don't. Um, you, it's not that Chad Chadwick Boseman is not Black Panther. That's not why I don't think this movie is going to be great because I think I, they should have recast it in my opinion. Um, but the fact that that the character T'Challa, we don't know what his fate in is in this movie. If they kill him off, I'm going to be upset. Um, but if he's around, I'm going to be hopeful for the future. I don't know what this movie, I think most anticipated, I'm most curious about this film because I don't know what we're going to get. I don't know where it's leading. I don't know what characters is going to introduce. There's rumors of Storm possibly uh, being introduced in this film. But I don't Name know how one. you into huh? Name one. Who? Name one. Submariner. Oh, yes. Apparently, Submariner is in this as well. So that's exciting. But how they go about this T'Challa thing is 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 looming on everyone's mind, and I think excited. There's more curiosity than excitement for this film. Um. Hey, if Ryan Cooler is going to do something fantastic with this film, and if it's well reviewed, I think it does. People are going to show up for this again, and I think it makes. I completely really agree with you. I completely agree with you. I completely we were one hundred percent in sync on on how this franchise ought to be handled versus how it is being handled. But you know, I think from an anticipation standpoint. I'd send you there's at least one list that has this as number one. I think that's insane. Fandango. I think it's insane. It's ridiculous. And, like, and that's, with all, I love Black Panther. And with all due respect to the franchise and the film, there's too many question marks to have this as number one. <laughs> um, so that being said, it, you can't not have it on the list because you have one of the great young filmmakers working today back to do this saying that he's figured out a way to kind of write this world without recasting the character okay he's earned the benefit of the doubt from yeah. that standpoint to where you want to see what he's come up with yeah you know that the black panther mantle mantle is not dying that it's going to be moved around now i think that's actually from an anticipation standpoint one of the big fascinations of this film because we we have gotten a confirmation the role will not be recast. We have not gotten a confirmation as to who is holding the power of the Black Panther in this movie. That's been an interesting sort of subplot to this. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people were, were on the Letitia Wright train until, I don't know how much we're allowed to talk about this, but between her injuries on set and the rumors of her anti-vax sentiment, she kind of got like sub canceled off of the yes. leading mantle to be the next Black Panther. So 
And I don't know if that has an, I think, you know, I don't say that totally tongue in cheek because I don't know if that, that like had an influence on the studios. Like there were rumors that they were willing to go forward without her. Yeah. Yeah. yeah those are now, that those have been since been debunked, but I just, it has created this weird, like, like you remember, like this is, this is not the right analogy, but you remember that when Heath Ledger passed, having played the Joker, it added this level of anticipation to Dark Knight that would not have been there otherwise because you yeah. were watching this performance of a now a now posthumous performance. Yeah. Similarly, in Furious Seven, when Paul Walker died and they finished the movie, it added this layer of anticipation of how did they do this? How did they fit this into the movie? Yeah. Here, Chadwick has already passed, so you're not seeing his last performance on screen. But I feel like there's the DNA of that type of anticipation because there's this void of a fallen actor that we just don't know how it's been filled. And we've got to find out how and why and what they're doing. And so it adds this layer of like, I want to see and I want to know. But I can't go to number one because I'm like, it's a Black Panther movie that right now doesn't have a Black Panther. Yeah. Which is kind of like a Batman movie doesn't have a Batman. Like, you <laughs> yeah. gotta at least give me like what that is before I'm gonna move it into like the top three or the top four. Yeah. But I will say this: whatever they come up with, if it's well reviewed, billion dollars, easy. Because yes, the yes, first yes. one did a billion three, and people will come out to support this because of Chadwick's passing. So if the yes. reviews are halfway decent, the box is gonna be huge. Huge. On this movie. Yes. Yes, I agree. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Um, what was your number seven? Oh, yes, Black Panther was number yeah, seven. Okay, so, that was my number okay, so um, we already discussed this. Black Adam was my number six, and I probably want to add a couple of things, um, regarding Black Adam. And I think you mentioned it, um, with regards to the, the flying technique, and, and I, I certainly want to see something different. And that was one of the things that I didn't get when I saw Shazam, and the fact that it was just, you know, I'm sorry to say it was goofy in my opinion. You know, and I and I and I just didn't I didn't really uh, enjoy watching Shazam, although it was it was great for some people. Some people really loved it and that's fine. But I didn't really like it too much. Um, so I want I'm curious to see what this is going to be. I mean, you got Hawkman, you got um, what's this guy's name as Dr. Fate? Uh, Pierce Brosnan, I want to see that performance. You got a lot of characters that you've probably, that you've never seen live action before coming to life, and I'm interested. Well, you've seen a live action on CW and stuff, but you've never seen them like this. <laughs> so I want to see how different they're gonna be. Is Hawkman played by uh, uh, what's his name? Hodge. Aldous Hodge. Yeah. Aldous Hodge. Is it gonna be? You know, I want. I'm interested in seeing the performance. The performances are gonna really. Tell me something on this, you know. So there's a lot of things to look forward to, but I'm, I'm, I think it's just gonna be a disaster. I, I, so I'm just, I just, I just put it on my uh, number six because of that, the the curiosity. You have it at point. number six with like the this is the like I'm gonna see like a, a fiery wreck on the highway and I gotta slow <laughs> down and I can't take my eyes off it. That's basically why you have it at six. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna cause a lot of rubbernecking on this. Rubber <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, my wait. number five. Oh, wait, I didn't get my number it. six, but I think it's, you're going to oh. find somewhat controversial here. Oh, okay. Because it's funny. I started this list and I thought it would be in the top three, and it, it wound up not being in the top three. And so now okay. I got. Kind of, I actually have Doctor Strange two at six. Okay. I. I think that I think. It, this has as much upside as anything on my list. I feel like if, you know, like, let's say, you know, who knows exactly. We've seen the teaser, which looks fine. But like, yeah. if some of the other elements of multiverse really come into play, like if that is really strange supreme and we're going to see like a, a continuation of the what if storyline in some form in this movie, that's a plus one. Yeah. If Aang is in this movie, that's a plus one. Plus like one. there's all sorts of directions I feel this movie could go to kind of raise its profile. Mm -hmm. um, but I do feel like it has a little something to prove here as well. I mean, Doctor Strange 1 is a very solid. It's actually like a nice rewatchable film. It's not a great film, in my opinion. It's not a great film. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, 
didn't think he knocked it out of the park in No Way Home. We talked about this in our review. Like he, I understand why he was there, but I don't think it was like, uh, oh my God, I needed him another 10, 15 minutes in the movie. Yeah. I actually think if anything, there was a little bit too much um, of him. And so I think that's I think there's some work to be done here to kind of get this franchise and get him to that next level. Now we've heard talk of Harm, Sam Raimi. We've also had reshoots going on which creates some question marks. Um, and seemingly some of those reshoots may be a function of COVID because there's a reference from at least the, uh, from the, the, from the no way home writers that the original plan was doc. And it's true. Doc strange two was supposed to have come out before no way home. So the doc strange that you see in no way home was supposed to be a post multiverse of madness, doc strange. And they had to rewrite it to flip the order around which may explain why they're reshooting a lot of Doc Strange too, but that also has me a little bit nervous. And that ultimately I was like, I think I got to knock this down a little bit lower. Yeah, yeah. The first trailer, while very enjoyable, I think was not like transcendent. It didn't yeah. show me something where I was like, holy moly, like Scarlet Wish and Doc Strange are going at it. Or there's something like Dark Hole or yeah, I hate to say it, Mephisto related, something big that we didn't know about yet. So that's why I have it at six. I do think it can get, I do think it could challenge a billion dollars if the reviews are there and those multiversal cool elements are there. But mm -hmm. I could also see this being a little bit of a disappointment or feeling like a step sideways if it's cluttered, if it feels messy. Uh, so I don't know. That kind of put me more in the middle of my range. Yeah. I have it higher and I'll talk about my... Um some of the things that I'm thinking about as more news comes out, that makes me have a bit of concerns. Uh, but I'll talk about it once I mention it. Um, no, my number five is uh, Thor Love and Thunder. Also my number five. Let's talk about it. All right. So let's, you let's have this that high, but yes, <laughs> also my number five. So let's talk about it. Oh, I have it on there. You know, there's no Hulk. So I hope there's no Hulk. So it's not there to ruin <laughs> the movie for me um i think it's anticipated we want to see chris hemsworth as thor as the thor that we not i guess used to seeing but a, another version of thor we saw the you know the thor that was in great shape great shape and 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 you know after infinity war and in endgame he was in really bad shape and now he's um different again and we want to see what sort of thor we're going to get for this film um what characters is going to introduce in this um i you know i'm interested in seeing what this uh um lady thor is going to look like and and how well it's going to come across is, is it going to is it going to look you know not um are we going to believe it her as thor are we going to you know, there are a lot of question marks, um, but I'm excited to see how they pull this off. Um, and, you know, one of the concerning things about this film, um, you know, they've said in the past in, in, in some articles, oh, this is Taika Waititi is taking it further with more craziness. And, you know, I'm usually not a fan of all of that. I think it's going to be a, a movie that uh, people are going to come out to see and people are waiting for. It's been... We haven't we still haven't seen a trailer for this, and and and, and still people are talking about Thor: Love and Thunder. It hasn't escaped people's minds, so I think it's going to do well. If it's if it's good reviews, can it reach a billion dollars? I don't know, Brian. I, maybe I, I don't I, I I don't think so. What are your thoughts? Really? Okay. So I think it is going to reach a billion dollars. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think. I think the reviews are very safely going to be good in part because critics love Taika Waititi. Whatever we may think of him, mm -hmm. um, you have to recognize that his movies generally get a lot of Oscar buzz and so they get a lot of critical acclaim. And I mean, let's not forget like Ragnarok. Again, we don't, the two of us don't love Ragnarok as much as the consensus, but it's $853 million worth of global box office that says we don't know what we're talking about. Yeah, and this was a one of the highest reviewed Marvel films of all time. I feel pretty safe in saying that if that the reviews will be there, and if the reviews are there, 
when you take an $850 million movie and you add Natalie Portman and Christian Bale, you're going to get a billion dollars. So I actually think this is one of the safer bets to get over a billion dollars uh, in, in the coming year. And to your point, I, I love what Hemsworth has tried with this character. I think it's one of the more underrated things that's happened in this genre. Very seldom do you see the superhero evolve and change as much as this character has changed and as much as he has played it different. I mean, like, I have nothing bad to say about RDJ. But Tony Stark's been Tony Stark. He was Tony Stark from the beginning. He was Tony Stark at the end. Like that's, yeah. He had a persona. He played it. Chris Evans found the lane for Captain America. He played it. Thor has been, as you said, all over the place. Yeah. Highest of highs, lowest of lows, immature, mature. Like, <laughs> I trust this guy to give us something new every time out. And not for nothing, he looks the most comics realistic portrayal of a character since Arnold Schwarzenegger walked out yeah. the screen as Conan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He looks in incredible shape because he's obviously getting ready to play Hulk Hogan. But I Which really gonna think be he, a, that's going to be an Oscar nominated. Uh, but I, yeah, I, but I think that he's gotten his acting chops to the point where he can make this character the most important character in a movie that has an Academy Award winning personality for him and an Academy Award winning actor in Christian Bale, who is also a big part of the reason this has to be high on the list. Like, yeah, Christian yeah. Bale doesn't do goofy. And if he's willing to come back to a comic book genre he said he would never come back to, to be a villain. In a Thor movie, I got to see what that's about. And yeah, this is based yeah. on one of the great comic point. arcs that Thor's ever had. So, yeah, like, yeah. you put it all together. I think every, I mean, as much as I'm worried that we get Ragnarok times three, <laughs> I'm also fascinated because, you know, all the ingredients do seem to be here for an amazing movie with an amazing lead. And, like, that would be, all. and if it's there, I think this one will be. I think, I think well, I mean, I don't think one five, but like, I definitely think like one, two, like it can get there. It can get there. My number four is going to probably be a surprise. I don't know if, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you thought of this, uh, but my number four is Elvis. Oh, I want, I, I consider this. Uh, yeah. So speak on it. I think there's a real case for this being an awesome movie, but go ahead. Yeah, man, I've always been a fan of Elvis, man. He certainly, he's one of those um, individuals in, in music, and in music history, and just in terms of icons uh, to come along and really change the mindset of people in terms of what a star looks like. Um, and uh, I've always been fascinated by the story of Elvis and I guess all the pressure that he had to go through and doing those God awful movies <laughs> um, and him wanting to, I think the last one I saw, I forget, I think it was John, Jonathan Reese Myers. That was okay. the last Elvis movie I think I saw. And I think he did a great job. I think it was on ABC actually. Um, his dream was to do go international and he never did so. Um, and I'm, so I'm interested in seeing uh, Tom Hanks, obviously a fantastic actor, one of the greats. And I wanted to see how the, the relationship between them two and how much he influenced Elvis's uh, choices in, 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 in things that he did with his career. I like this pick. I mean, it's funny. You, there's a couple of genre movies that I, they're not really like my favorite genres. Uh, so I didn't put them on here, but this was one. I mean, Tom Hanks is Colonel Parker, uh, Colonel Tom Parker. Boz Lerman also, anytime he directs, you have to pay attention. I'm not always mm -hmm. the big Boz Lerman fan, but like, I do find if you go to the theater to see one of his movies, you rarely feel like you wasted your money. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think Great Gatsby is a great movie, but I think if you saw it on the big screen, you're kind of like, this was an event like there was some real production value and stuff like that so no i think it's a completely defensible choice the other one like i'm not a horror guy i don't really care for horror movies but nope was the other one that i kind of looked at because jordan peele is jordan peele right and so yeah. he's kind of earned the respect i don't really like those kind of movies so i didn't put on the list but the, but i think you're you're onto something that is by as far as biopics go this is one of the more interesting bios you could 
kick. And the mm-hmm. cast is great uh, with, with Hanks in sort of the whole top billing role and, and, then, and a sort of a younger Elvis uh, newcomer in, in mm-hmm. that one. So yeah, no, I could definitely see that being one of those like awards fair type of films uh, by the time we get to the end of the year. Uh, my number four was, is actually Mission Impossible 7. So I have this. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, we talked about it. The one thing I did want to come back to, though, was this idea of, you know, what does it mean for the superhero genre? And I feel like this franchise took off when they started to leave the team intact movie to movie to movie. So if you look at Mission Impossible 1, 2, and 3, he basically, other than Ving Reigns, they change out the rest of the team. Yeah. When they get to Mission Impossible 4, Simon Pegg is in the field. He stays part of the team. And then later they add, then they add Rebecca Ferguson. She stays part of the team. I love this because I feel like in superhero movies, if they're not going to do like full on Avengers, but you're going to have like movies where there's three or four and they're not always like the main superheroes. I love bringing back, bring back the same people because we have an attachment to them. Yes. So when you carry them forward, we care when they're yeah, in exactly. the field together and these yes. actors develop that chemistry. I just think like when you watch Rogue Nation and then into Fallout, it's so apparent that these people are having a good time with each other mm-hmm. that like you're just along for the rock. And as much as Cruz may be like what like a strange dude, like his standards are so incredibly high when it comes yeah. to action and execution that like again and realism you just never feel like you've been cheated. Like you just don't yeah. feel like you wasted your money if you went to the theater to watch whatever you know stunt he comes up with next so yeah and chris mcquarrie who's the director for a weird reason like he's not an amazing director outside of this franchise but he's a master of this franchise and the fact that they're making seven and eight together and they're kind of ending the franchise it seems with these two Mm -hmm. sign me up i think this is going to be an amazing film and that i I couldn't not have it in the top five because i've just been hey outside of comic book movies i may have rewatched. Rogue Nation and Fallout more than any other movie in the last 10 years. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, my number three is Top Gun. Good for you. I have it at number two. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. You know, I was watching Top Ca- Tom, uh, John Campion and, and they have mentioned Top Gun as well. Um, you know, who hasn't watched Top Gun, man? That is a bona fide classic right there i watch it to this day if it's on um it's just one of those movies you want to see again the realism that tom cruise brings to a a production and as you if you've seen the trailer you you're gonna see um um new camera angles on flights and 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 all these other things that are going to be certainly exciting to watch and um you have some some young actors some new actors and Tom, Tom Cruise doesn't work with people he doesn't believe has, um, I think, a talent. So I think this is going to be a movie that we're definitely going to be uh, excited to watch uh, over and over again. I don't know if it's going to make a billion dollars. Does it have a chance to make a billion dollars? I don't know. I don't think so. Um, um, but I think it's going to be a movie that people enjoy and it's going to do well in the box office. But billion dollars, I think, is a little bit... Uh, uh, I don't think it's possible. Do you think there's been a movie that's had better aerial footage since that movie? The movie that comes closest, Iron Eagle, the first one. <laughs> but that's around the same time, though. Yeah, uh, yeah, Iron yeah, Eagle's yeah, actually yeah. earlier than Top Gun. Iron Eagle 1, I think, is 1982. Oh, really? I think. And so Top Gun is 86. Okay. The, the, only movie that did anything I thought that's ever approached what this movie shows you, even today, like mm-hmm. I actually showed my kid the opening scene of this movie the other night, just because she randomly was like drawing the cockpit and I control it. I was like, you got it. I was like, all right, I'll show you a couple of minutes of this movie just so you understand. It's still the greatest display of like being in the sky. You know, obviously the Navy helped this film and will help this new one. They gave them the actual planes to use and they have real pilots behind these. But uh, in um, Dunkirk is the only movie that got close. The aerial footage with Tom Hardy yeah, in the crowd. I didn't see that, yeah. On the big screen is amazing. I mean, you feel like you're up in the air with this plane that could come apart at any minute. But that's what I expect. 
Top Gun. And as you said, it ages. I mean, in some ways it's even better now than it was when I was yeah. a kid. Yeah. Uh, it, I don't think they'll be able to capture the 80s nostalgia, like of the yeah. soundtrack and some yeah. of the fashion, like because it's just a different time. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, as you said, if I am expecting groundbreaking visuals and like you can't not see this on the biggest screen you can possibly find. Oh, of all yeah. the movies on this list, I would argue this movie is the one that probably is most screaming to not be streamed. Yeah, um, yeah. You got to watch I, it in the theater. I think there's a really good supporting cast here. You know, I feel like Miles Teller kind of went through the rise and fall of Hollywood. But if you look at like his more recent stuff, whether it's Whiplash, what, he's a good actor. Like when he's dialed oh, yeah. in, he's oh, a yeah. good actor. I think Glenn Powell is going to be a megastar in the next 10 years. I think you'll see him in a Marvel or DC movie. I don't know what it's going to be, but like he's a guy I think you'll want to keep an eye on. In this film, he seems like the new Iceman, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and then you got, you know, John Hamm, you have Jennifer Connelly. I mean, like, this is a great supporting cast. Yeah, yeah. And I, again, you trust Tom Cruise to be like, well, first off, I guess he went and actually learned how to fly one of these. That's wow. supposedly, <laughs> which is just insane if he even got close to that. But yeah, yeah you're using F-18s instead of F-14s and the Navy's helping them again. So you're going to have things that you just don't see anywhere else. So I have it as my number two and I'm with you. Like, I mean, we grew up as children of the 80s and it's like, even if, if you are a children of the 80s, you have to see it. If you're not, I think you'll yeah. get something new out of this film going yeah, experience. Regardless, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think it's a billion dollars. I mean, I think for this though, the success bar is probably more like five. If, if it does 500, it will have made probably a lot of money. But yeah, yeah. So, that was oh, my number my, two. You had that yeah. as your number three. Dude, so yeah. I actually had Avatar 2 at number three. So okay. let me take the defense of this. Okay. Um, it's, it's, it's in some ways pretty simple, which is... Terminator, Aliens, Abyss, Terminator 2, True Lies, Titanic, Avatar 1. That's James Cameron's filmography. When has he ever let you down? I don't <laughs> care how long it takes. Yeah. He's never let you down. And even though I'm actually not the biggest Avatar defender, it's not a movie I go back to and rewatch a ton. Yeah, yeah. I can't deny the innovation of what it meant when it came on screen. Like there were, yeah. you know, this was a guy who pushed the absolute limit who made 3D a thing that Hollywood thought we all were going to buy for five years. And if he's saying he's waited 13 years for the technology to catch up with what he wants to do, and by the way, not for nothing, he is, outside of documentary filmmakers, he is the biggest ocean lover that I know. Yeah. And so this is an underwater movie, basically. I just, I, I can't, it's like, if I leave him out of the top three now with the box office he's produced and the, the how much he's meant to my life as a fan of movies, I feel like I'll get like shot with a million volts. <laughs> so I have to have it in the top three just because I, I believe in James Cameron and I, I yeah. think that he's defied the odds of relevance over and over and over again. And again, I just feel like he is not going to let this go up on screen without it being something you've never experienced before. In some yeah. form of fashion, so I yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's it's you know it's weird to have it all the way down at my number ten, but it's not to say that I'm not excited to see this film. I just you know have the waiting so long. It's just that feeling of waiting for so long to see a film or, or a, a sequel to a film that you knew was coming because of how much money it made. Um, and it's been talked about forever. And, 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 you know, for me, I guess that feeling of um, all that, that, that reputation of films that have taken so long to come out with a sequel, generally, this, despite how good they are, they just haven't done well. Blade Runner, Dumb, Dumb, Dumb and Dumber 2, you know. The, you know been, <laughs> I'm just rough. saying, Fine. you know, waiting so long for a film, do people, you know, not, are, are people interested, you know, but I, I think once we get a trailer and see what this potentially may be or, or look like, I think uh, the excitement will start to rise. But, but isn't so. this, so let me, let me counter that though. Isn't this the, isn't this the kind of movie similar to Terminator 2 where the longer wait actually helps the sequel? 
Because in the sense that had they made Terminator 2 in 1986, when they would not have been able to, to CGI the T-1000 the way they did, mm-hmm. and it would have looked and felt more like Terminator 1, that's not as good an experience and not as good yeah. a movie. And I feel yeah. like in Avatar 2 comes out in 2011, it would have been more of the same. I don't think they could have avoided that. So yeah. isn't it actually better that we've waited longer because it sort of increases the odds that what you see will actually be different I and therefore we, better? I think we will have to wait and see what this looks like in order to determine that. I think that will be the difference. Like, oh my God, I've never seen anything like this in my life before. And he, and and that's going to be the difference between having to wait this long for something that's revolutionary to something that felt more or less the same sort of situation. The only difference is on the water. That's going to be the difference. But uh, yeah, I mean, again, James Cameron has never let you down. So uh, I'm pre- I'm quite certain that uh, people are going to come out to see this film. Well, so I, I mean, we, we, were, we were going through it. So this one is basically, if this doesn't make a billion dollars, it will be an epic failure. Oh, yeah. So actually, oh, yeah. the benchmark for this movie is probably more 1.5. And obviously, the prior one, yes. you know, was 2.7. So yeah. like this is a movie where like they're thinking two billion, not one. Just you know, so if it doesn't, if, if we're think, at a billion dollars, this is a disaster, and we're not seeing Avatar three, four, and five. Then I can tell you. Yeah, I, was he filming two and three? He did two, three, and four all together, but there's five in total. Okay. I think it'll be above one point five. I think so too. Yeah, I think that's um, the count. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's the worst case scenario for that. Um, num- my number two is Doctor Strange. And and just one thing that I want to mention, because we already spoken about Doctor Strange too. Um, I think there's a lot of curiosity to this film. Certainly a lot of t- anticipation because this, we're going to dive deep into this multiverse. I think one of the things that concerned me as of late uh, it is some of the leaks that have come out that we're gonna we're, do, we're gonna see a lot of cameos, and I don't know if this is coming from the cameos that we've seen in No Way Home that were highly successful and and it was pulled off greatly. Are you saying that you're gonna top these? <laughs> you know, and and how are you gonna do that? I mean, we've spoken. Some of the rumors are that we're going to see uh, Professor X um, and Magneto and maybe X-Men and, and, and um, Wolverine. I don't know if this concerns me a little bit. But I, I, the anticipation of this film, I think, is certainly high. And if is Doctor Strange has sort of translated his moniker as not so popular of a character in the comics to the movies, although he's a little bit more important in the films than he is in the comics, so to speak. So there's not much difference in terms of his popularity in the comics or in the movies. Um, This is going to be a wild ride for this film. This is supposed to be their first attempt at horror. I don't know how true that will be or how it will show in the theaters in terms of it being a horror film. Um, But it's certainly, there's a lot of curiosity and excitement for what this will be. And the cameras only has me, has me a little bit of, uh, if they're corny, it's going to probably ruin a little bit of that, that, um, how much I enjoy this film. What, what are your thoughts on what I just said? Yeah, I agree. Cameos have to have purpose. You know, I think when you see No Way Home and there's, you know, spoiler alert, there's sort of the fracture in the multiverse and you see just for a brief second the outlines of these characters. You know, it's very clear that Sony intends to introduce the Bino, Black Cat. And they're, you know, so there's, there's, but they're also not eating up screen time. They're on screen for a second. It's an outline. Yeah. It's not an actor. It's not a spoken part speaking part so that stuff doesn't bother me but like stuff we've heard in the past you know if you're going to have like the alternate avengers with some of the casting decisions that the fans wanted that we never got right like emily blunt does suit up but it's just that's the stuff that worries me because that doesn't go anywhere that's literally just you're going to eat three minutes of the movie to get some chuckles 
<laughs> and like that's the stuff that concerns me. Now, if you want a cameo live action watcher with Jeffrey Wright, okay, now we're talking, right? That because yeah. that goes somewhere. That can lead us to places yeah. we haven't been. So I'm with you. Cameos can be powerful, as we've seen in cutscenes and credit scenes. Um, if they're done well, uh, cameos can also clutter up a film that has a lot to do, quite honestly, already. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I hope they're not going to try to engage in a game of one-upsmanship with No Way Home because No Way Home's purpose as a culmination of 20 years of Spider-Man storytelling is completely different. Yeah. Doctor Strange 2 is a launch pad for multiversal storytelling in the MCU. That's completely different than what No Way Home is trying to do. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that that was my number two. What's the um, what's the what, like so? What's the most like the element of Doc Strange two you are most excited to see on screen that you kind of have a at least we have a pretty good sense we will get. Um, I'm curious of the Doctor Strange or the Supreme. Um, Strange Supreme, yeah, the one from yeah, What If? Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm curious to see who that is and and what transpires there. Um, are we going to see Kang at, 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 at an end credit scene? Um, those are sort of the things. Other than that, I don't know what we're going to see. Is it going to open the world to werewolves and vampires and all this other stuff? I don't know what we're getting here or what the end result of this is going to be. I don't think we're going to get a resolution but I don't know what the end of this film will be. What will be, I guess, the the, the ending of this? I don't know if it's going to end off in, uh, I, I wouldn't say to be continued, but it's hard to resolve this movie uh, or, or this concept of the multiverse, right? Because mm -hmm. we still have Kang out there that's going to be around. Uh, so it, it's just... It's a lot of curiosity for me, and, and, and I think that's what has me excited about it. Um, what else are we going to see from this? I think I settled on a fully unleashed Scarlet Witch, maybe under the influence of the Darkhold, against Strange Supreme. That was what I settled on as like, I would like to see that staged with a big budget. Yeah. full full on because i think there's been an expectation that she would go head to head with dr strange and then i saw this trailer and i was like well, what if she goes head to head as the more the the good side of the equation against the bad the evil dr strange like what if that's the showdown we get and they can both kind of just cut loose mm -hmm. um because the one issue with her going against benny to come back as the good dr strange we know they have to end up on the same side whereas if she's fighting the strange supreme we don't there they can actually, the stakes are higher. So I actually kind of settled on, if we get that, I might actually be a little bit more excited. Um, but uh, but I'm with you, like there's a lot of TBD. And Kang, I mean, the, the beauty of Kang, the way it's been set up is that he's gonna be playing a different variant almost every time yeah. we see him. So yeah. that's the part that me I love about this is like everything we saw in Loki, you can kind of just file away and be like, he might not have that role in that character when he shows up next. There was one theory that someone said that perhaps because um, we don't know how long Scott how, we don't know how long Scarlett Johansson is not Scarlett Johansson um, Elizabeth Olsen Elizabeth Olsen is going to play Scarlet Witch. Um, I don't know if we get to that moment of no more mutants, right? Um, well, I, this I would movie would be that, a little bit I'll be disappointed. You you wanted what, in this what, movie? No, what they so the theory the theory is that she may be the person to bring about mutants. Uh, I just I just don't see that happening either. That was John Campion, by the way. <laughs> I said that I'm like, what? What are you talking about? That's not gonna happen. Um, but let's see. This the possibilities for this movie is just endless. So we don't know what we're gonna get. Um, your number two was Top Gun. All right, we already talked. Oh, okay. So our number one, <laughs> obviously. Obviously, if you've been watching this show, you already know what it is, man. You already know what it is. Um, I had a, a very interesting conversation the other day with AJ, who I'm trying I'm trying to get on the show. I'm trying to get him on the show, man. He, he says he has to get the right makeup and cameras and all this other <laughs> stuff. I'm like, dude, just come on the show, man. Um, and he had he said that he read something about um that they screened this film already, right? 
and that some of the reactions are that this movie is almost like a horror movie like it's very scary and suspenseful um which gets me even more and more excited for this Batman that we're going to see. Listen, I've hyped this movie. I, I, I don't know. I'm the, I, I'm probably the biggest hype man for Batman. <laughs> you can't tell me nothing. Anybody tells me that, like when that fan, that, Brian, what did I do? When I when I saw that Fandango list and Wakanda was number one and, and Black pa- and, and Batman, the Batman was number three or four or five, whatever. Really? It really? doesn't belong anywhere else but number one. We're going to have a problem. <laughs> the Batman is the most anticipated film of, 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 of 2022, hands down. I don't know who you're asking, but there's no other movie that competes with the excitement that people are feeling about the, this movie. The people over on the Batman production have already stated they already told Chris Nolan, we want this movie to be better than yours. We want it to be this, the, 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 the Batman that everybody remembers, the best Batman ever put on film. This is what this is supposed to be. That's the aim. And they're very openly talking about this. And based on what we've seen, everything that we see, although we don't want to see any more. No. No I hope they don't. I, I hope they don't do any more, but they will. There is no competition. We are not disappointed. There's not. We, I'm scared to see any more. But every time I see more, because I can't help myself, I get even more and more excited, and that's very difficult to do. So, Brian, anybody that talks to you about my most anticipated film is Wakanda Forever or is Top Gun or is like you're out of your mind if you had a if somebody put a gun to your head and say give me a top 10 you're not gonna tell me it's freaking Creed or Mission Impossible Avatar 2 you're gonna say the Batman if you had to bet that that the most anticipated film is is, is the Batman you, you, you there's no other movie this is the movie of 2022. I don't understand what people, it, it drives me crazy. <laughs> when people talk about another movie being number one as the most anticipated. It's like, are you out of your mind, y'all? I, the, the most views that we get on this channel is because we talk about the Batman. That should tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, is is there any other movie that even comes close to number one? No, there, there's just there just there just isn't. Let's be let's be clear. It's not. It is not Batman on his own that automatically deserves a number one spot. Let's be very clear about that. Right? Yeah, if, yeah, yeah. If we, if we were sitting here, and that's why I think when we do this ranking, it's it's not totally fair to the gray man's, not that they would be number one, but the gray man's and the creeds of the world. Well, we haven't seen footage, right? Mm-hmm. We have a concept. We don't. If all we had was a cast list and a concept for this movie, we would certainly be interested. But Batman alone wouldn't get you to number one. This is number one because of the culmination of the way it's been marketed, which is literally perfect. Fandom teaser into the fandom trailer to the Bat and the Cat trailer, which, as, as you say, is already past my point of too much footage. Yeah. It's literally perfect because it is staking new ground for what is possible in this genre. That's why it's number one. We talk about superhero fatigue. We talk about concerns about, hey, you know, the formula, the Marvel formula, more of the same. DC is always too dark. When you look at the material for this movie and you listen to the cast and the directors talk about the inspirations and where they want to go everything about this suggests they are taking the genre to a place we haven't seen it go to before and they're not stretching to do it they're doing it by embracing the elements of comic book batman that have never been explored on screen the psychology of his trauma and his skills as a detective 
And if you pull that off in the framework of great suspense, horror, thriller, serial killer, great. You have redefined what is possible for a comic book adaptation. And if you do that using, for many people, the number one comic book character of all time, there's a reason why Batman is usually that popular and usually gets that many shows and that many. <laughs> if you do that successfully with Batman, you do create something that is very hard to touch, very hard to touch. And I just don't know how the mass audience isn't just stuck into the vortex of this movie if it's everything we think it can be. And the studios agree because the calendar cleared out. <laughs> this, is a, this is like, you know, this is Kobe ISO. We're just going to go stand along the baseline for eight weeks, basically, and let you run. Let you what work. Was, That's basically what was, what's happening. What was supposed to come out in March that they, they delayed it? The Doc Strange got out of the way. There's basically nothing before it either. Don't underestimate that. There's nothing coming out in February before this movie that's a big blockbuster. This is a clear line. This is everyone saying, like, we want no. So these people saw the fandom teaser. They had COVID, all this chance to reset their schedule. And they were like, nope, we want no part of the weeks before. We want no part of the weeks after. Because that movie, we got no shot. Yeah. Yeah. And that is why this movie is going to make, at least in my opinion, $1.5 <laughs> billion. <laughs> If it wasn't COVID, I, I was I was I was saying two. Two was it two was a little bit crazy, but I don't doubt it because of how listen. I've always you know, I, I don't go to the movies a second time. I, I you know, even though I love No Way Home, I love No Way Home, I want to see it again. I'm not watching to go see it because you know, I again I've said this before. When I watch them, when I go to see these movies, I'm usually locked in. Right. Um, I may miss a few things here and there, but I got the gist of this film and I've seen everything that I've needed to see. I think for the Batman, I'm definitely going to I may buy. When it's officially out, I may buy tickets to see the second and third view and like, you know, back to back. We get I had the same thought that it might be one you need to see twice opening weekend. And I think a lot of people are thinking the same way. This movie's gonna do gangbusters, man. Well, and I'm hoping that again, the environment it, it calls, it makes it available to us to you know go go to go see this movie, and, um, you know, and the reviews are great. The yeah. reviews have to be on point, and sure. I think if we get an 85, 90, and it's the masterpiece. Listen, there's nobody that's said anything negative. The people. And the cast have been, I can't wait for you to see this film. Obviously, Matt Reeves can't wait for you to see this film. And um, I can't see any other movie being number one. Yeah. So we, we've kind of been here before in a way, in the sense of when, when The Dark Knight came out in 2008, you had Ledger's performance. And I think you had people's reaction to the way Nolan kind of expanded the universe, raised the stakes from Batman Begins. And what ensued was actually something groundbreaking, which was, if you recall, there was an uproar when The Dark Knight was not nominated for Best Picture the next year. And up so he fled through one for Best Supporting Actor. But people got so irate that The Dark Knight was not nominated that the Academy expanded the number of nominees for Best Picture the following year, specifically because of that movie. Because that movie caught the so-called elite of Hollywood by surprise in redefining how good a comic book adaptation could be, how serious it could be, how real of a movie it could be. Yeah. I think we're here again. I think we're here again with the same character in a different light. That if this movie succeeds in its tone and its aims, you call me crazy. I don't think it's impossible. It had the wrong time of year. I don't think it's impossible that it gets nominated for Best Picture of the next year. Because I think if critics go in and they're like, wait a minute, this is really like thriller, or it's really, 
you know, a Sherlock Holmes mystery we're using Batman. Like if it resonates on that level where it's like, this is highly artistic, highly skilled with great performances. And it's not just to shoot them up and it's not just an effects driven movie. I think you could see some awards attention given to this film. And if that happens, I think it will change a lot of things. I think you'll see, as I said, I think the genre is headed this way anyway, but I think if this thing does what we think it can, I think you'll start to see filmmakers think more creatively about what is possible with these adaptations to move them into different types of genres and away from what we've been used to as a highly successful formula for the comic book adaptations. I, I can't say that enough. I really think this movie could be the fulcrum for something really significant if it's successful. Listen, I've always said that this movie is going to be the beginning of something. I don't know what it is, um, but it could begin, be the beginning of that, Brian, what you just said and what it could start. Um, I'm hoping that it certainly... Um, when it comes down to the summertime when uh, Discovery takes over and they're talking about what they can do with some of this IP, they ho I hope they look to that. And perhaps Matt Reed will be the guy to take over DC. Who knows? Who knows? That's We would hope so, right? And, 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 and Matt Reeves hires Bruce Team to be a part of his parliament. Who knows? Right? Um, one of the interesting things that we haven't seen any footage of, and I hope his role is not diminished, is uh, Falcone. And what's the guy's name that's gonna supposed, supposed to play him? Is it Totoro? John Totoro, yes. It is Totoro. Okay, yeah. Yes. So that's a, that's a performance. Hopefully, his his role is not small, and he has some sort of role to play in the subsequent films that they're gonna make. Um. Uh, so that's going to be interesting. Um, I was going to say one more thing. And yeah, I was going to say this. I've said it once before, and I'm going to say it again until the cows come home, until people, when, when, when this actually happens, I hope it happens, it has the potential of happening. Um, when is Gotham supposed to come out? The t like his TV verse series? Have yeah. they actually put a date on it? I, I think know. originally it was the year after the Batman films. So I guess uh, that would be 2023 now, right? Because originally the Batman was 2021, right? And the and the right. and this was, yeah. So I think it was supposed to be 2022, but now probably 2023. Well, I hope we get an instance where we get to see Jeffrey Wright win an Oscar and an Emmy for best supporting role in the movie for the same character. That's something that's never been done before. So I'm still sticking to that. Hopefully it happens. Even if he wins for the same role in different years, that's something I think people haven't, uh, that's never happened before, right? So. Well, there's the joke of what is it? The, the EGOT, the, the Emmy, the Grammy, the Oscar, and the Tony. That's, the, <laughs> that's like the, the Grand Slam. <laughs> that's the so I don't, some people have gotten three of the four. I don't know if anyone's gotten all four. Yeah. Um, listen. I can't wait for this movie. I can't talk enough about this movie. Um, but yeah, that's not number one, man. I, it, to have anything else is just... Uh, it's its own It's its own category. Yeah. We have a yeah, top 10 list, but we kind of have like a number one and then there's like a gap and then there's two to, two to 10. Yeah. I mean, if you... If I ask you what's your most anticipated... It, it's your list. It's fine. Um, but if you're going to put a superhero film... If the Batman is not your number one, then I have to sort of look at you with a questionable look like, is what, you know, there's a problem. There's an automatic, like, I, I, I question your credentials in this. That's fair. There's like levels of, that's fair. There's <laughs> levels of, if you have a superhero movie and then there's like, if you so much as sniff a DC movie that's above this, then you like, it's like levels of incompetence that you could. Yeah, you, it's you like, you, you, you got a question, like, I, I doubt you really understand yeah, what this movie let's, is let's, let's, be. let's be honest they'll never say it on the press tour but you know that Jason Momoa and Ezra Merlin have this <laughs> number one ahead of their own <laughs> you know hey. <laughs> yeah man hey that's our top 10 list I, I, I wonder what your guys top 10 list is um, if again if you don't have a number one I don't know what to tell you but uh, that's our show for today 
Um, the Book of Boba Fett, we'll talk about on another episode. We're going to talk about it after the second one comes out because we always felt like, you know, and this is something I want to talk about in the next show when we do talk about Boba Fett and the reasons why, you know, they're releasing it one at a time. I have a theory behind that. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but I think I mentioned it to AJ because we had a long talk the other day for like an hour talking about um, um, Spider-Man and Home, which he loved. And we've been pretty close in terms of what we think of movies. We saw Black Widow together um, and uh, Eternals. And we saw, we went, he came out feeling sort of the, the same way about these films. Um, but he said he loved No Way Home, the execution. He, he had sort of the same sentiments that we had towards the movie um, when we did our show. Um, but that's our show for today. Brian, any last words? Yeah, my last comment is look look at the depth of the field that we've talked about in this show compared to what we got this year. And obviously, like we were coming off 2020 was, you know, the depths of the pandemic. But we talked about the 2020 was 2021 was, you know, kind of a disappointing year all in. I think No Way Home yeah. leaves you on a high. Yeah. But a lot of things that we were excited for didn't really pan out. Um, you know, I think there was, you know, little like smaller things like Mortal Kombat that were disappointing to you know, Suicide Squad and Matrix, you know, bombing at the box office. You know, I think it was it was a very uneven year. And I, I don't think we got a lot of great films in the blockbuster superhero genre. But look at the list, man. Look at the list we gave you. I think if we are not sitting here a year from now saying that we had a didn't have a great year at the theater, something went really wrong. With a yeah. lot of these projects, because like there's a lot of really good really stuff. Good stuff yeah. On this list. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, once again, please hit that like and subscribe button, hit the notification bell, share with your friends. Um, and let's just start a discussion in the comment section. Tell us what your uh, top 10 list is of most anticipated films, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report.